recording. Because again, we're getting graded on everything here, and I'll send the rubric back when everybody's done. You know, some of the grades I already put in. When you're ready, I am. I'm recording okay, already. Go ahead. All right. So this is the function that we are going to be describing. It's e to the x. You may know it. Looks like that. Yeah, it's at zero, one. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And at one, it is e. And it's a hor or a horizontal asymptote, and it goes to infinity. All right. Where does e come from? E was it's like discovered by Euler, but not really, because it was used a lot before Euler used it, but mainly in economics and in times of like where they're trying to calculate exponential growth. But Euler discovered all of the calculus properties of this number, which is why it's now called calculus is a natural number. That's why it's called a natural law. So what is E? So E is approximately 2.718, but it is defined many ways, but perhaps most known by this Taylor series representation, what we did in class. So E to the X is uh, the summation of X to the nth over n factorial, and which can be written as that to infinity. And then if you put one in for X, you'll just get the number E. More places with E? E shows up everywhere. Like pi, it's calculus is pi. Like Except it's pi is a number. Yeah. That. that limit is important. Because the solution to this limit is E. Exactly. All right, so this is our derivation of E, which gets a little worried, but all right, so what is the derivative of a log? So if you use the definition of a limit, it's log base a of x plus h minus log base a of x all over h. And that's the, the definition of a derivative. Yeah, derivative, as h approaches zero. All right, so then we use log properties and divide everything by x there. So it becomes log of one plus h over x over h. We can multiply this by x and divide it by x. And that doesn't change anything, obviously. Then we substitute h of x. We make that u instead. And so now the limit's approaching u. Or yep. e zero from u. Because if you look at that, no matter what, as h goes to zero, that's going to go to zero. All right, and then we take this back and uh, we say that it's multiplying by 1 over the denominator, which is the same. Then we can use properties of logs to move the 1 over u into the exponent there. And uh, so therefore, if this limit is uh, from u approaches 0 of 1 plus u to the 1 over u power, then the derivative of a log base a of x is equal to 1 of x. And if you recognize this from our last slides a couple slides ago, that is E, which is 2.71828, so on and so on. So along with base E of x is 1 over x. So solving the limit, we get E. And this is properties. So when x is 2, it's 1, x is or 1 half. X is 1, X is 1, X is 3, 1, 3. And then this is how, from what we have there, you can figure out what the derivative of a different log is. Because you can't really do that without knowing what E is. So you start with what we had here, and that's from our past group. And then uh, you can derive it. Yeah, so, yeah, what happened? So, since this is equal to E, you can just put in E for that. So, what, this is the same thing. You're just substituting E in for the 1 plus U to the 1 over U. And the limit. Yeah. All right, and then this is a property of logarithms. 
Yeah, so you're just writing everything to the base of E. You're just changing bases in the, So this, since this is log base E of E, it can go to one. Since this is log E of A, this is just the natural log of A. And that's what the derivative of the log is. And then times with the chain rule, obviously. Yeah. All right, so E has a lot of application in economics. It's used for exponential growth calculations, and you'll see that in our fun interactive little uh, demonstration coming up. And it also has a lot of applications in number theory, because you saw the Taylor series, um, when you combine it with uh, uh, sine and cosine, it re it's really helpful for navigating the unit circle on the complex plane, which is why it's, it's used a lot in and calculus. That's awesome. Look at that fundamental yeah, animation. Remember this equation that we were using. E to the i pi. Right? Is that right? Equals. No, minus one is equal to zero. Uh, are you, are you? <laughs> it's right. It's like that. So it's something like that. Well, that's a good question. How to navigate. Can't you just write e to the i pi equals one? Yeah, but you have to put zero in it. Why? Yeah, because oh. zero is a great number. All right, so this is our little demonstration. If you all get out pieces of paper. No, let's just get money. Oh, okay. Ooh, Peter wants money. to show off his fabulous wealth. Yeah. All right, so you have $10. Please excuse this interruption. Internet and phones are up and running. Go to work. Okay. So <laughs> you've got $10, and you've got this very generous banker who wants to give you 100% interest throughout the year. So you could compound it once. You can compound it how many ever times you want. If you compound it once, what do you get? Well, 100% increase on uh, $10 would be $20. So you can get $20 if you did it once. If you did it two times, though, you could get 50% interest. Yep, 50% interest, because you divide it by the amount of times. Oh. Yeah, $20. If you did it two times, though, you'd get $22.50, since you'd be getting uh, $15 from the first compound, and then 50% of that is uh, 17, or 17. So yeah, it'd be even more. If it's by semi-annually, so four times a week, it's 24.414. All right. And now, if we compound it every second of the year, which is quite a bit, it was hard to do the math, um, we get 27.1828, which looks kind of familiar. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So now you do your worksheet and then we'll continue. Do I stop recording now? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, no, we can still have more. This is, we're doing worksheet mid class. I mean you can you can. We have ten minutes left. You can work together like you did in the other one. You guys done? If you want to do the last one without a calculator, please let us know. We will give you extra credit. Okay. I'll do that. Maybe. It's compounded to a total of 100%, right? Yep. yep. I am so confused. So what we did, but 
what the basic equation would be. So what were we doing? Compounding. Yes, what was the equation we were using? I don't know. You didn't really put it up there. What? You didn't really put it up there. I know, you have to make the equation. <laughs> <laughs> how? Uh, using what information? There's, there's no money, 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 one dollar. It's, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's one dollar. 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 That's correct. Yes. Uh, it is. This is exactly what Whoa, it is. Are you dividing by 100? I'm just dividing by 100. You have to take the 100 total divided by the amount of time you take the interest. Well, no, because it's, it's 1, which is like 100% interest. It's 1 plus one that. Because you multiply, you're not like, you don't go, okay. So and then you get another 100%. Like you have $5. You don't take 50% of that. You take 1.5 of that. Or how many times are you compounding it, though? Two N times. times. Okay, but so if you had five dollars, put that up. That's twenty. Twenty plus one to the five power. That's twenty to the five, which is significantly bigger. Yeah. What? It's not one hundred then. Because that would be twenty to the fifth. Okay.